The world is inundated with varying beliefs and opinions that often create mass disharmony and divisiveness. The lack of inclusiveness, harmony, and mutual common goals are causing undue stress in the world. Sometimes it seems like the world is waiting for something either catastrophic or extraordinary to happen. Some of the world religions wait for a savior or avatar, while other religions wait for the end of the world. Perhaps it could be the end of the world as we know it. Others call it the end of an age and the beginning of a new one. Therefore, this presentation seeks to ponder the possibility of a world teacher stepping forward as a representative for all humanity. A teacher that belongs to no specific religion or race, but for all mankind. This can be better understood by the realization of our own innate divinity and the recognition that many have gone ahead of us in human evolution. Buddha, Krishna, and the Christ are prime examples of the advanced stage in the evolution of consciousness meant for us all. Throughout time, many individuals have expanded their consciousness beyond the physical world and have entered into heightened modes of new experiences. In the past, we have read about enlightened teachers stepping forward in many civilizations, inaugurating new ideas and methods of living. However, because of the worldwide streaming of communications today, a very advanced soul could potentially have a huge impact on the entire world. If one wants to open the mind to such an event, then the shedding of outdated political systems and limiting religious dogma could be moving us forward into a period which may fundamentally alter life as we know it. It is the soul of humanity that is awakening. Therefore, let recognition be the aim. Currently, in the world today, we are witnessing two schools of thought 
that are pushing dueling visions. A more nationalistic way of thinking versus a vision more aligned with sharing of the world's resources through cooperation. Regardless, changes are taking place in all departments of life. It seems the old guard is breaking down, and the old way of doing business as usual is serving only the few, but not the many. The common man and woman are awakening to a higher calling and demanding change. Albeit different groups are looking for change in different ways, but all want a better life. The forced transparency of hypocrisies, corruption, and inequality are unnerving to witness, but societal change has always been painful throughout history. Today, there is a purging of all outdated and outworn belief systems that humanity carries around and needs to shed. Like a snake sheds its skin to slither forward, the world is shedding its skin of illusions and divisions that don't serve anymore. It is becoming more clear that most people are no longer satisfied with the status quo of outdated institutional systems. The current mainstream dialogue is the upper 1% of humanity would like to keep the status quo as is because it serves their lifestyle and self-interest, while the bulk of humanity have grown weary and dissatisfied living day to day simply to survive, often not making ends meet. This is not meant to undermine the honest work that many wealthy philanthropists contribute to society, but only when we approach new policies in the interest of the many and not the few can a discerning mind be seen as fair and productive. The question is, can humanity do this alone, or is divine guidance needed? Are all religions correct in their expectation of a coming one, like the reincarnation of Buddha, the reappearance of the Christ, or the Iman Mahdi and the Kalki Avatar? Some simply see these beings as teachers, whereas others see them as saviors. Perhaps both are true from a certain point of view. In the past, religion and philosophy have been the primary avenue for human curiosity and the search for truth. Now we live in a modern scientific age of global communications, and the average person can gain much knowledge and insight almost instantaneously through technology. Science has also come a long way in explaining the mechanics of the physical world, but still remains limited since only a purely physical model of life has been presented. Even though science has learned much in the realm of psychology, biology, and the study of physics, but the study of consciousness has not been studied widely or even recognized as a science of its own. The science of spirit is left to philosophy and metaphysics. However, Cutting-edge scientists are making profound discoveries every day, and these are gradually entering into a more mainstream dialogue. It would seem that we would have more adequate means of solving our economic and social challenges if we had a better understanding of our own existence and purpose in life as a prime motivating factor. The recognition of conscious evolution benefits everyone.
can the secrets of our higher consciousness unlock the mysteries of the human soul? So what does any of this have to do with an avatar emerging onto the world stage? If we ponder the true needs of humanity, one could speculate the need to bring forth a new paradigm. So how do we do that in a timely fashion to help speed up the process? What an incredulous opportunity to be offered a way forward that nurtures the soul and fosters right human relations, rather than simply the pursuit of excess materialism. Many have discovered new terrains within themselves through meditation, service, and of course, through various spiritual practices. In truth, every unit of life is evolving to become a more refined and perfected organism as consciousness evolves. From this point of view, we can see that the genesis of all nature follows a beautiful holistic pattern, which is known as sacred geometry. We see this not only in human life, but in animals, plants, and even minerals. So this begs the question, where and how does consciousness exist beyond physical form? Perhaps knowing the exact answer isn't as important as wanting to know. It is commonly understood that energy cannot be destroyed, only transformed. In a general sense, this is the fundamental basis behind the idea of reincarnation, which is widely embraced in Eastern traditions, but has also rapidly become more accepted in the West. The principle of reincarnation answers many questions pertaining to the vast time span of the evolution of consciousness, but mainly that nothing really dies and that everything has a plan and purpose. Again, an example of how consciousness is not bound to the physical world, but merely a part of it. So if the spirit of Buddha or Christ never actually died, then where are they now? And if they were to return, what physical form would they take? The first question we can ask is what is the destiny of the soul? If consciousness itself is evolving, then what is the natural progression of its development? The Ageless Wisdom teachings reveal that we exist within a living cosmos and that spirit or energy animates all of life. Consciousness is a part of all reality, but in regards to our tiny little planet, it evolves through the various kingdoms of nature. It starts with the mineral kingdom as the foundation of life on Earth, where geometry is formed and crystallization takes place. Next, the plant kingdom, where growth, vitality, and rudimentary feeling arise. Then the animal kingdom adds mobility, metabolism, and instinctual mind. From there, individuality of self occurs, and the soul enters the human kingdom, where it now reincarnates through many bodies, but now preserving that spark of individuality and introspective self-consciousness.
Above and beyond the human kingdom, we can only speculate. But the ageless wisdom reveals that there is another kingdom, known as the spiritual kingdom or the kingdom of the soul. It is from here that the world teacher descends. This great event is called the externalization of the spiritual hierarchy. All cultures have their legacies of great spiritual adepts, saints, and sages who have left an indelible impression on those who earnestly seek spiritual enlightenment. They have experienced the trials and tribulations of human life, and through great efforts of their own merit have reached higher states of consciousness through love, sacrifice, and surrender to the higher will of the Godhead. Buddha taught to his disciples the mechanics of his own liberation. Krishna taught Arjuna on the battlefield that the true battle to win is within himself. Christ gave discourses on the way to enter God's kingdom through love, forgiveness, and brotherhood. All these teachers taught the virtues of consciousness, which are required to unfold the powers latent within the human soul and to give us the experience and knowledge so higher wisdom is then garnered in each life. Once enough integration has occurred within the personality, then our consciousness can fuse itself with the soul and therefore transcend the limitations of mortal life. and this will then eventually free the soul from the wheel of rebirth and karma so we can graduate from the human kingdom and move beyond into the next phase of life. In regards to the greater life in which we are all a part, we are entering the new age of Aquarius. A new age ushers in a new rhythm of life with new opportunities for growth. Past astrological transitions have always been accompanied by an avatar who helps usher in the new rhythm and sets the tone for the coming age. Whenever a negative polarity of discord is present on Earth, then, under the law of attraction, it attracts a positive polarity, such as an avatar or world teacher. If this is a universal law, then why would today be any different? Yet in the past, these teachers have been limited to a particular geographical region given the time in which they appeared. Could this current astrological transition going from Pisces into Aquarius be the first to produce a world teacher known to all humanity? If true, it would seem appropriate given the current state of the world now fully interconnected. Biblical scripture talks about the water bearer. When you enter the city, 
a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. The sign of Aquarius, the water bearer, symbolizes carrying the water of the world. Now we arrive at the heart and soul of this presentation, the revelation of the coming one and his daunting mission to lead mankind into the Aquarian age. It is important to note that this presentation does not claim to know the exact means by which the world teacher could appear, nor is known the date or hour. However, we can reference the work by the Tibetan master Dwa Kul, who is a member of the spiritual hierarchy and who has also written extensively on the subject during the mid-1900s through his amanuensis, Alice Bailey. The Tibetan has stated that humanity must do the required work in order to invoke the world teacher. This includes a measure of peace within the world, the church beginning to clean house as it were and the principle of sharing at least partially implemented in global affairs. The Agni Yoga teachings have also spoken extensively on the coming one and the new age that will be ushered in by him. May the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May I fulfill my part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech. The world teacher comes to show us the art of living and how to create a more prosperous civilization by sharing the world's resources by recognizing we are all one human family. He will gradually emerge into the world with a handful of his co-workers known as the masters of the wisdom. A master of the wisdom is one who has graduated from the school of human life on our planet and now guides the rest of mankind from the fifth kingdom of nature, which exists upon the inner planes beyond the physical world. This divine group functions as the inner government of our planet and they will show us the blueprints for a better world. But humanity must respond of its own free will to build a new civilization that will benefit all.
When the signal comes high in the cosmic spheres, this planet will be flooded with spiritual power which will rejuvenate our world and elevate our consciousness into new expanded perceptions of purpose and joy. But humanity has to complete the preliminary work beforehand and till the soil of the earth to prepare the new seeds for the forthcoming rays of light. In advance, matters must be prepared here and receptacles made ready so that the power, when it comes, shall benefit and not shatter. Nation by nation, race by race, person by person, the forms must be prepared and the ball at least rolling in the right direction as to not offset the momentum. None of this would be remotely possible were it not for the new enthusiasm which will sweep the earth. These are inspiring words and something to envision in full faith as we struggle through this difficult transition. The externalization of the spiritual hierarchy may or may not initially be recognized. Their love, wisdom, and spirit of goodwill will galvanize the new group of world servers. Therefore, let recognition be the aim. The new group of world servers are all the people everywhere who recognize the need for right human relations in such a divisive world of corruption and conflict. Once galvanized, they will impulse the mass of humanity to respond to the call and will become the single greatest force in the world. For the first time, the true will of the people will finally be heard, armed with the collective vision of oneness and inclusiveness for all. The world teacher does not come to fix our problems for us, but to show us how to fix them for ourselves. He is a teacher and guide, a simple man who will speak from the heart, but a heart illuminated by the fiery will of God. In closing, we will restate. It is the soul of humanity that is awakening. That is the true emphasis here. The forces of life are responding to the call of physical and spiritual demands. After all, the great chain of life can never end, remain the same, or be broken. May wisdom be earned from the lessons learned. Let the present stand firm by appropriate action. 
and the future seen by the intuition. It is not known when he will arrive, nor the name he will take, though it has been said his spiritual name or title is the Lord Maitreya. Again, may recognition be the aim. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.